Hey guys, it's Doc's Market Minute for Wednesday, March 2nd. I thought I'd give an update on the calendar spread that I set up the other day because the assumption was that we were going to get into a small range area on the S&P 500 as we waited for the jobs report, which is coming out on Friday. Well, the best laid plans, right? We had this huge explosion yesterday in the S&Ps, almost 50 points worth to the upside. So big, big move. And it just kept on chugging higher, right? So we actually, after we set up this trade, we actually pulled back a little bit to the downside and then bam, the slingshot kicked in. And so what happened was, this is where the price is today, and it was actually above this point yesterday. What this caused me to do is to adjust my calendar. So I'm going to turn a single calendar into a double calendar and give myself more room. Now this is not one of these magic adjustments that you make to trades to say, hey, we're going to turn a losing trade into a winning trade. It's not like that at all. What we're doing is we're actually adding more risk to the trade. Yes, we're adjusting the trade. Yes, we're adjusting the risk characteristics of the trade. But we've also doubled the amount of capital that we're applying to the trade. So that's one thing you learn about options is options. There's no free lunch when it comes to options. There's no single thing which comes along which is free. There's no free lunch out there. If you want to adjust a trade, you have to do so by adding more risk. Okay, so we've given ourselves a lot more room to work with. However, now the short options, which are at 195 and at 200, are now further out of the money. Now that they're further out of the money, what, means, what that means is that they don't erode as fast. So the time value of decay is not as quick as if the price just stayed there at 195 like it was supposed to, like I originally felt like it was, right? So typically in a case like that, I can be in and out of the trade maybe in three to four days and I'll get my 10%. Now I'm going to have to sort of sit through this one, pass the jobs report, and more than likely into next week. Now let me go over to the chain and show you something that is going to be sort of the key towards winning this trade. A lot of it is going to have to do with what happens to the implied volatility as we get to Friday. So after Friday's jobs report is released, my expectation is that this implied volatility is going to come in. Now, we'll probably see it rise just a little bit into tomorrow, especially tomorrow afternoon. We'll see that rise up a little bit. But then once the market opens on Friday, the jobs report will have been out for at least an hour. So unless we see the market selling off really, really hard or rallying really, really crazy and we see a lot of activity there. So if it's just a normal reaction to the jobs report like, oh, OK, then we'll see this eventually come in. Now, that's good. We want to see that come in anytime we sell an option. However, at the same time, what we don't want to see is that the back week option. In this case, I bought the April 2, which is about another month out there. So if we look at this, the 195, originally when we bought this one, it was sitting at about 1897. This one has already come in about a percent after yesterday's rally. Okay, so we don't want to see this one come in too much more because what will happen at that point is that this whole profit and loss graph will actually shrink. Okay, so this will actually shrink like this. And we get more sag between the two positions. And if it shrinks, what that means is that we have to stay in even longer. So we're going to have to, to run this thing almost all the way until expiration just to get our profits, even if it stays within this area. And of course, if it doesn't stay within this area, then our losses will increase. So those are some of the things that we factor in when we play calendar spreads like this. Typically, I only play calendar spreads during bullish markets where things are very quiet and we sort of have grinding moves and we don't have these big moves. So it was probably a, uh, a mistake, a little bit too optimistic on my part that we would see some of this realized volatility stop coming in. This is not the type of market that you want to be trading 
at the money calendar spreads with, right? So this is a great market for out of the money vertical spreads where we're setting up iron condors and things like that. So it becomes very, very easy to manage those when the price is moving around like this. But with time spreads, you want something where it's just kind of like going quiet for about a week and then maybe it breaks out again and then goes up to the next level. We're only going to see that during quiet and trending markets. So if you go back to 2013, most of 2012, you know, times like that, this is where we want to be doing at the money time spreads. But right now it's probably it was probably too optimistic on my part to enter into this uh, this week. All right, guys, that is it for today's Market Minute. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow.